Visco tears really break down into two, two age groups. There's the young age group, which is typically the traumatic age group. In other words, they, they have a story to tell you about what happened to them versus the older age group, which kind of comes in and saying, uh, I don't really know what happened. I think maybe I stepped on, I felt something pop. And it really defines the two types of meniscal tears. The traumatic meniscus tears, the meniscus is very healthy, has good blood supply, really never been injured before. And those are the ones that require trauma for them to tear. Whereas in the older age group, and that can even mean 40, and it may have been something you did when you were 20, but it didn't tear enough, but you worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And then at 40, 50, 60, 70, step on it, it pops and it becomes painful. So they all present with pain is the problem. The difference being too in the traumatic ones that typically they're gonna need to be removed. In other words, those tears don't heal. They don't have a good blood supply. Uh, you can live with them an awful long time. And I have people that will tell me that, that I had the trouble last year, but it got better. I had trouble again, it got better. And finally on the third time around, they decided I better come in. And they usually have a little bit of a swollen knee, pain on the inside or outside of their knee, and they have that tearing. And in, and in general, those people will go for an arthroscopic surgery. Uh, people will say, well, you're going to repair it. Well, technically not, because the tear is degenerative. It doesn't have a good blood supply. It's not healthy. So typically that part of the meniscus is gonna be trimmed out. We'll leave every little bit we can because it's a critical structure, but repairing it probably can't be done. When you get to the younger age group where they can have a tear, uh, a wakeboarder, a snowboarder is a classic one where they make a jump and they flatten their board out and just really compress their knee, that's enough pressure to hurt it. And the ones that can preserve the meniscus, that's what we try and do. And that's actually done through a repair process where we put needle and thread to it and pass sutures through it, tie it down into place, and then what we hope is that it will then heal. We look at pressures inside the knee, even a small amount of meniscus removed increases pressures tremendously, which means it increases the risk of arthritis. So those, those little menisci that we didn't think were a big deal are very protective inside the knee. So when are we, whenever we are removing it, we're taking out minimal amounts if we possibly can. So preserving all of it is, is the way to go if you can. Uh, and then when you have to take it out, take out the least amount per, for uh, arthritis prevention. Well, it's actually a lot easier if you don't repair it. You know, so I tell people that here's the good news and the bad news. We, we could, bad news is we couldn't repair it, but the good news is your rehab is going to be fast. So when you're removing the meniscus, there's really no suturing. You're not putting a stitch on them anywhere. And so it's a matter of once that mechanical piece that's been bothering me is removed, it's just regaining their mobility. I mean, in general, it's a three to four week process that we think, want people to think about because they're going to be in rehab and we don't want bounce backs and we don't want other problems, but it's basically that. When you do a repair, you get into a much longer process. It's, it's kind of like any repair, it takes about six weeks for it to heal. And during that time, you have to be very careful about your not putting weight on it, not bending your knee too much. And so you're kind of on the sideline waiting for this to heal. And then once six weeks go by, then you're back into that same process. But you can see it's almost double the time, if not more, for the repair.